This is gouache paint. It's kind of like watercolor, but more opaque. It's really fun and easy to use. It comes in a tube like this, or you can also get Hemi gouache, which comes in like little McDonald's barbecue sauce packets. Both work essentially the same way. I just like the tube because they last longer and I like the Winsor & Newton brand. My favorite thing about gouache is it dries to a matte texture, meaning it doesn't have any kind of shine to it, unlike acrylics or oils. And yes, that acrylic paint is dry, see? Gouache paints can be reactivated with water, meaning that even after it's dry, just a little bit of water turns it back into paint again. Unlike acrylics, once they're dry, they're waterproof. I think the reason why I like gouache is because of the matte texture. Maybe it's an autism thing, but I just don't like the feeling of the glossy paint. It's, it's a tactile or texture thing for me. Also, gouache is really easy to learn, especially if you've used watercolors before. And you can buy Hemi gouache for like 25 bucks on Amazon. And if you haven't noticed, for this demonstration, I'm drawing Doc from Back to the Future. And I'm using just a number two pencil. My lines could be as messy as I want them to be because I don't need to erase them like I would for colored pencils or markers. I'm adding my undertone now and I'm using teal. And if you remember when I did the markers video, I did like a lavender for Mr. T. And really for me, all this is doing is it's just getting rid of the white. It's just adding some sort of color that will be underneath the skin. And I like teal for an underneath the skin kind of feel. And again, similar to what I did with the markers, I'm coming in with some pinks now. And there's no right way of doing this. This is just what makes me happy. So that's why these videos are called everything I know about colored pencils or markers or gouache. And now I'm just feeling like I need to kind of isolate the character. I just need to find my shapes. And so I'm just roughing in the background color with some Payne's Gray. And now I think I'm ready to start adding in some shadow areas. And if you look at the photo reference, you can see what I'm looking at when I'm creating the shadows. Just like my markers and my colored pencils, I personally don't really have a plan when I'm painting with gouache. I'll just lay colors on until all of the colors that I see in my reference are in my painting, if that makes any sense. As I look at the photo reference, I'll see greens like here or blues like over here and reds and pinks and yellows and purples. So I keep adding those little bits of color as I see them. I'm constantly going back and forth and going, oh, I see a little green here. Oh, I see a little blue here. And that's what you're seeing with me throwing all these colors at it. And what I like about gouache is all of the colors will blend together because it's water-based. So as I come in with a new layer, a little bit of the previous layer kind of lifts up and becomes a part of that color that I'm using. So unlike say acrylic gouache or acrylics, where once they dry, they're, they're done. You're not gonna be able to lift up that color again. With gouache, once you add another layer, because your paintbrush has some water to it, it's now reactivating that previous layer just a little bit. Take this blue color that I'm adding to his skin, for instance. Can you see some of the oranges and the pink still underneath? They're getting reactivated a little bit from that. And there's a little bit of transparency too because there is some water to it. Also, you may notice that sometimes I blow dry the paints and that really kind of solidifies them a little bit and keeps them from reactivating if I don't want it to lift up. Just like any other medium, if the paint is still wet and you add more paint to it, they're gonna blend. That's just the nature of it. And I tend to use both techniques. Sometimes I'll go wet on wet and sometimes I'll go wet on dry. It just really is up to the feel. If you look at the blue light on the right side of his face, our left, you'll see that that is wet on dry and it's very stark and it's not blending with the colors beneath it. That's intentional. But now watch his eyes just start to layer a whole bunch of different colors wet on wet so they can all start to blend together and become its own kind of skin tone. This is another technique. So you've got wet on wet, you've got wet on dry. The wet on dry gives you very stark, very clean lines, uh, very clean pieces of color. Wet on wet gives you very blending kind of colors. And you'll see me using both techniques to get 
the look I'm looking for. Unlike markers or colored pencils, gouache paints have the ability to go dark or light at any moment, meaning I can paint something absolutely black, decide I don't like it, and paint stark white on top of it. And as long as my previous layer is dry, I'll get good results. Gouache is kind of my universal undo button for art, but I don't like to draw with gouache. I like to draw with a pencil. And sometimes if I feel like the piece just isn't clicking in some spots, I'll come in with a colored pencil and noodle a bit. Just draw on top of it until I feel like I've got my shapes the way I want to or I've defined something that I couldn't do with the gouache. So just like with the markers and the colored pencils, don't be afraid to mix your mediums up a little bit. I like to draw with a pencil. I feel more comfortable with a pencil in my hand. So every once in a while, if I just start to feel like I'm unhappy with something, I grab a colored pencil and I doodle. So don't be afraid to do that. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can see the colors that I'm adding to this piece. There's all of the stuff that makes me happy. There's the yellows, there's the pinks, there's the blues. And I'm looking at the photo reference and I'm getting an impression of what colors I'm seeing. And the reason why I use the word impression is because there's a little bit of me that was inspired by the, the impressionist or the post-impressionist where they were painting the impression that they got of something. It doesn't have to be exactly what you see, you're painting the impression of what you feel that you're seeing. I'm no art historian and I may not be the best person to explain that, but that's what I got from studying impressionism and the post-impressionist movement. Okay, one more thing I wanna talk about is the layering of colors. The more you layer, the less of the white of the paper Paper that you're gonna see. And I'm noticing that I don't like the background color and I wanna make it a little bit more smooth, a little bit more consistent. So can you see here where I put a layer of purple over the Payne's gray? And here's a look at what the background looked like before. You can still see a lot of white of the paper behind it. But as I add another layer of this nice dark purple to it, it gives it a really smooth consistency and without seeing the white behind it, it's got a nice painted feel that I really like. And there's two ways of getting more consistency and more opaqueness. One is by layering it like I'm doing here. And another is just adding less water or going straight from the tube. And both are valid. But the reason why I like this for the background is because now my background has two colors or really three if you count the teal from the beginning and you can see some of that showing through. Now I'm just grabbing a gray colored pencil to just kind of flesh out the hair. I could do this with a paintbrush, but again, sometimes I just feel more comfortable with a pencil in my hand. And that's pretty much everything I know about gouache, I guess. This was just a little 90 minute doodle, but I hope it encourages you to try gouache one day. And please don't be afraid to experiment with new mediums. Play around, get your hands dirty, have fun. The worst that can happen is you're out a few bucks for materials, but there's always the possibility that you find something that makes art joyful, magical, exciting. I wish I would have tried watercolors or gouache when I was younger. I finally got the courage to try them in my 40s and I absolutely love working with them now. Don't let the fear of trying something new keep you from something that may change everything about your art. And as always, please mix your mediums. Use colored pencils with markers and gouache and see how you like it. Try acrylic markers on top or oil pastels. Play around and don't be a purist. Art is art, there's no rules. So mix them up and enjoy.